Rob, their coach talked about this matchup being one that they wanted, that they wanted Kentucky. Is that something that you guys saw or took personally, or what, what are your thoughts on that? We here to play basketball, <laughs> so uh, if they if, that, if they think it's what they want, then that's what they want. But uh, I'm just here to play basketball. I guess what do you know about Oakland? What are you looking forward to about this this matchup in particular on your side? Well, I know a couple of the guys on the team, so I know I, I know it'll be a solid matchup. They're a good team, so we just got to play hard and not take anything for granted. So it should be a solid game. How excited are you for your first March Madness? Oh, I'm super excited because uh, <laughs> I like winning. And I like I like it's March Madness. This is the time where everybody can win. So uh, really, just yeah. What are you laughing at? There's something wrong with this dude. Can I take you back to your recruiting? Because I, I wonder, how, how does a kid from Hickory get to Kentucky? Like it has Carolina State, you know, you were committed to State, and like everybody, you know, how, how, how did you, your journey end up here? Oh, uh, I'd say really just that's how God made it for sure. So, uh, yeah, I was committed to NC State. I had Carolina. I had, but I just felt like Coach Cal was the best fit for me. He he showed the most love to my parents. He, he came to my mom and he sat down with her. And a lot of coaches just tell you what you want to hear, and he told her the real. So uh, my mom loved Coach Cal, and she's hard on me, so she definitely wanted me to come here. What was your reaction when you saw NC State pop up in, in your part of the bracket? Uh, I I didn't really react, but I mean I seen them for sure. It was definitely in the my in the back of my head. I'm like, man, it is NC State in our bracket, but uh, I don't really look towards the next games. I don't look at. I just play one game by game, take it day by day. When, when you initially committed to NC State, what went into that decision? Why did that seem like the right choice at that time? Um, so we, I was playing with CP3 at that point. We had. G.G. Jackson, he plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. Then we had A. And Holloway. We were all going to go to school together. So I had committed first. G.G. ended up reclassing up. Biz ended up not wanting to go to NC State. So uh, it was just a lot because we were all going to go together. So. Did you like Keys in the way they played? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Coach Keys. It's always love with Coach Keys. He always showed me love. Yeah, 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 for sure. He even showed me love at the day I did decommitted. He, he, yeah, he always showed love since after that. So I always love Coach Keys. And he's a good guy for real. What's it say about a guy like Coach Keys to, to still kind of show love even after you said, you know, I'm not going to come play for you? Uh, it is crazy because I. Reed and Rob should be starting. Why aren't they starting? Do you hear that talk? And what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't pay attention to any of that. Um, you know, I trust the coaches completely. And, um, and you know, me and Rob are perfectly fine with doing what we're doing and whatever's best for the team. Um, you know, and that's what's so special about this group is that no matter who has a good game, no matter who makes a good shot, everyone's celebrating. So it doesn't it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter whose night it is. Everyone's going to be happy and everyone's going to be uh, celebrating. Is it more important that you're in there at the end of games? I'm sorry, what? Is it more important that you're in there at the end of games or who's in there at the end of the game than at the beginning? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you know whatever the coaches are feeling, uh, whoever's playing well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as long as we win, that's all that matters. Oakland's coach talked about this being a matchup that maybe even favorable, but one that he was definitely looking forward to. Is that something that got back to you guys, or something that you're looking forward to, knowing that they're kind of coming in with an edge as well? No, I mean we haven't we haven't even looked into that. You know, the coaches haven't said anything about that. Um, you know, right now we're just working on working on what we need to do, uh, continue to get better in practice, and continue to learn, and and just work on what we need to work on. Um, so you know, we're really excited to get out and, and play, and it's it's been everyone in this room dreamed to to be here and be able to play. So we're all really excited. Cal talked about in at his house. The, you know, everybody raise your hand if this is a moment that you've all been waiting for. Just w what about you growing up as a kid, knowing what this means that you're finally here? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, you know, I'm from Kentucky. You know, I've always dreamed of playing at Kentucky, and being here at March Madness um, is really special. And being able to do it for the first time in a Kentucky jersey, um, you know, it's going to be really awesome. And I got a really good group of guys around me that's going to make it uh, make it even better. So I can't wait to get out there and start playing. You have any memories of growing up watching this tournament? Anything stand out to you? Uh, I wouldn't say anything stands out, but I definitely have memories. Um, you know, a lot of it's just just watching it with my family and friends and mom and dad. Um, 
you know, we, we didn't miss it. We always, we watched every tournament. Um, and, you know, it was just always fun being in the house. You get to watch basketball all day at school, you know, putting on the projector in the classroom, pulling it up on your, uh, your computer. You know, it's kind of a couple of weeks of school. You don't really have to, you can kind of catch a break. You get to watch, watch basketball all day. Especially in Kentucky, you know, everyone wants to watch Kentucky play, so it's, it was it was always fun. Yeah, I was gonna say, I remember growing up, and it was awesome when the teacher would let you turn on the projector to what you want. You know, you wanted to watch the Kentucky game, especially. I don't know if that happens in every state, but I know it happens a lot here. Uh, that the students and schools get to watch. What does it mean to you to, as someone who grew up getting to do that? So now, you know, you might be playing around in classrooms over the state this this next month. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, you know, because I was that kid sitting in the classroom watching Kentucky, always dreaming of playing at Kentucky. You know, you watch the Kentucky game, then you go out outside at recess and and you pretend you are one of the players. Um, so now, being able to play for Kentucky and uh, other kids being able to watch us play on TV is pretty cool. You remember the 2012 championship? Where were you? What was the excitement level like? Did, is that a memory that kind of stored in your, your your brain? Yeah, I don't I don't remember where I was uh, or what I was doing when I was watching it, but it's definitely one that I won't forget. Um, you know, it was a great team and it was an unbelievable run. We just came from the Oakland locker room, and of course they have a player whose dad played at Oakland under the same coach, and, and now he gets to suit up just like his dad did. So it's kind of cool to have, you know, two guys in this matchup in similar situations. Obviously, I don't I don't know if you know him at all, uh, Trey Townsend, but he just talked so highly about you know getting to come play at the program where his dad was. I know you've talked about that to death this season, but what does it mean, and how, how kind of cool is it, I guess, to have one of you guys on both sides of this matchup? No, that's really cool. Um... You know, and for him, I'm sure he feels the same way I do. You know, it was always his dream to, to play. Um, his was probably at Oakland and mine being Kentucky. So being able to do that, you know, following, following our dads, um, you know, it's really cool. It's, it's not – a lot of kids can't say they had the opportunity to do that. And, you know, you play a game, you do something, then you can talk to your dad about it. And your dad played here, so he knows, he knows what, what you're going through, good or bad, so it's pretty cool. They also have a player who's only attempted eight two-pointers all year. What do you think about that? It's all threes. <laughs> no, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, he's a really good shooter. He's a really good player. They have a really good team, uh, really well coached. You know, it's going to be a really good game. We know we're going to have to come out and, and be sharp and play really well. Um, but we're, we're excited. We're excited to get out and start playing. How do you game plan against something like that, knowing a guy is just exclusively, as soon as he touches the ball, it, tr trigger warning? Yeah, you can't, you can't leave him open. Uh, you know, and, and it's not that he's just shooting them, he's, he's making them as well. He's a really good shooter. Um, so, you know, we definitely got to be close to him at all times and not let him try and keep his attempts lower. Awesome. Thanks, mediator between the coach and the, and the yeah. players. I mean, I'd imagine there's no more important role for, for Rob than that. <laughs> to, yeah. to have somebody yeah. as an intermediary between him and Cal. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's, I mean, every player goes to it. You're, you're going to butt heads with coaches at some point. But, but for me, I've, I've kind of found my peaceful ground, you know, and I'm able to understand both sides. And, and just sometimes the delivery versus the approach can, can be difficult for some coaches to, to understand because it's just like we're, we've got some young dudes and they don't, they don't see the game like a coach sees the game. They see the game completely different and, and they think that like coach may be screaming about something but they're taking the screaming instead of what they're trying to convey through their screaming, you know, and sometimes that's just, that's just where I step in and I come over and I'm just like, yo, I know he's screaming, I know you're upset, but this is what he's trying to tell you to do. So just do that and he'll get off you. Having watched Rob a lot before he got to Kentucky, I admit that I thought it was potentially going to be a disaster, <laughs> like he and Cal together. Yeah. How well do you think they've each done managing that situation? Like, because because Rob's like a player you got to kind of give a long... Yeah, yeah you got you to gotta give him some, some freedom. But I think, I think they've done a good job managing it, you know. Sixth grade for sixth grade for me, but like sixth grade, you might have been in second grade. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. Been like third or fourth grade. That's the thing. I was in. I think second grade. Um, where was I? Have you said they've done a good job managing it? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, everybody has their moments where they they butt heads, and you know, cow, cows not the. I would I would say not the calmest guy when he when he approaches certain situations. So 
it's easy to take what he says the wrong way. And, and that, that's like what I said, that's where I kind of step in and I'm like, yo, this is what he's trying to say. And then he's like, oh, okay. And then like, they're fine and we're good to go. You know? Thank you. The talk with the Philly game was Justin, DJ, Aaron, getting the tickets, family coming out from every corner of the world. Yeah. What's it been like now that you're in those shoes, having different family members? Oh, man. As soon, as soon as the name popped up on the screen, I got a, a bunch of texts just like, yo, can I get a ticket, this, that? Like, but uh, people are coming through and just like, I'm going to be there. I think it's like almost anybody that, that is in Pittsburgh or, or I have come in contact with throughout like my journey and, and is around the area is going to be there. You know, they've all hit me just just good luck, this and that. Like, we'll be there watching all that. What, what, is, what does that mean to you that kind of the, your last go around, you kind of get to you know, finish where it, where it all started? You know? Yeah, it's a it's an unbelievable blessing, you know. It's been a it's been a long journey and a long road. Uh, different from many people's roads, but I, I, I do feel like it was it was a divine orchestration from God, you know, and and just being here in this moment is proof in itself that that I'm where I'm supposed to be, you know. So it's just it really is just a blessing. I'm trying to enjoy every second of it. Huh? He asked me who coach was gonna yell at first. Oh him. I said me. Definitely. I asked five five guys. They you know what they all said? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. How cool is it that he gets to kind of have his own home homecoming? I guess yeah. now it's Orlando playing here. Yeah, Hershey. literally. And everybody not just There's mu multiple guys. It's it's insane. You know, just how how our paths kind of all led us through here at some point, and now we're all together coming here as one and, and, and getting an opportunity like this. So I know I know Kyle's enjoying his little homecoming, and, and he's 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 brought a couple of his friends around and things like that. But yeah, it's just it's kind of it's just an unreal moment. I, I can't really put it into words. So the Oakland coach kind of made some headlines with what he said about wanting Kentucky, about the interior presence, said that there wasn't a, a post-scoring option for Kentucky. Is that something that you take personally, or did you even have You know, coaches can say what they want to say. You know, I'm not going to speak too much on it now, but it's, it, it is it is what it is. You know, you can have your opinions, you can you can have your viewpoints, and. I'll let the game do the talking at the end of the day. You mean? I mean, it's one thing to 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 speak how you feel, but I feel like there's there's another level to it when when a little bit of disrespect comes into play, because it, it's not it's not just me. It's, he he. It was basically just like we have no inside presence whatsoever. You know, we have we have some unbelievable talent on our team and our seven footers. Me and dude, we we have some unbelievable players, and I I just feel like it should have been at least acknowledged. But at the end of the day, you're going to have your opinions, and our game will speak. So how did that baby find The way you've come back, going through injury and adversity, kind of getting to this point, you know, does that add a new level of excitement to you, knowing that you're kind of starting to feel like you're going to try yeah. again? Yeah. That now you can, you know, against a team that does it on its own, a lot of it kind of plays right into what you do well. Yeah, Is exactly. Kind of like something like, all right, let's play No, on. yeah. I, I've, I, I've been unbelievably excited th this past week. Uh, so as soon as that that Pittsburgh popped up on the screen, not only that, but but when we we got into film and stuff, and we saw they they played a lot of zone, and I was like, okay, so like this is a legitimate opportunity here. So and on top of that, just kind of getting back into my flow, how I've been, it and it's just it's another level of confidence, and, and I'm ready to go. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jeremy. Said that this was a matchup that he was wanting, that he was hoping that Kentucky would be on the other side. Is that something that you guys, you know, chip on your shoulders, something that you guys appreciate? Don't even pay any attention to it. I mean, you know, we know they're a great team. You know, we're gonna have to come very prepared to play. You know, they're a very well coached team. They're gonna be a good team to play against, and they're gonna fight. So we know we're gonna have to come in and fight as well. Cal told us on Selection Sunday that he showed you guys like a 15 minute highlight video of the season. <laughs> you guys played well as a team. What was it like watching some of those moments back? Uh, it was cool. It was cool just seeing, like, but also it, it made it feel like, like, dang, like the season did go by very fast. Just seeing some of them games, it felt like they was yesterday. Just, but seeing some of them clips, it just really showed us how how good of a team we got. Just how many great players we got, and how many guys could do so many different things that help with our team. So I feel like it gave us confidence. It just, it made it fun for us.
privilege of seeing that instead of just being on the court all the time, seeing it from that perspective, being able to see it from a different perspective, like on video, it, it made it pretty cool for us. Yeah, do you kind of store some of that confidence in your brain, like now heading into these games where you do have to make it happen, get a win to keep playing? Do you think back to some of those moments he showed you? Yeah, I feel like you got to have confidence. You know, that's, that's a part of the game is having confidence, especially coming into tournaments like these and you can't ever – not have confidence or have any kind of doubt. You know, you gotta have confidence no matter what. And I feel like as a team, we've been all helping each other with that, just staying confident and our coaches been helping us stay confident because that's something you need. Yeah. March Madness is new to like 90% of this locker yeah. What kind of stuff is Calipari telling you? Uh, just that, just to go out there and play, really. You know, he told us just go out there and play, play free. That's something he's been saying a lot. Just go out there and play free and just do what we, we supposed to do. You know, what we learn, just follow the game plan. and. As long as we prepare, he said he, he feel like we're going to be good. As long as we go out there and have fun. What have you learned about yourself? Thank you. What have you learned about yourself day one, going through the ups and downs, adversities, injuries, to get to this point, knowing that you know this, this is March? What, what have you learned about yourself as a player and as a person? Uh, as a player, just, just learning new stuff about the game You know that I didn't know before. Just being a young player, like I said, just learning new stuff. I couldn't tell you nothing specifically, but just learning a lot of different stuff, like offense, defense, just being a good teammate, just all that kind of stuff. But off the court as well, just all that kind of stuff tying into the game. How have you grown as a person experiencing college, experiencing you know, Coach Cal, yeah. from what you thought of it, what it was going to be growing up as a kid versus now here? Just, uh, i say just being more mature, like being more mature, just knowing how to prepare for certain games, how to prepare for practice, taking care of your body, all that kind of stuff. Just once you get to college, it's like a whole different ball game. So just all that kind of stuff, tying into it. When you were in high school, you kind of had a reputation for being an alpha, a dude that you wanted the ball in your hands at the big moment, big stage. Does that kind of mean something to you, knowing that this is the biggest moment, the biggest stage, that, you know, there's, you know that that's kind of what, what you do, this is why you bring a guy like DJ Wagner to Kentucky? I mean, in a way, but, you know, I know I got a lot of great teammates that's alphas as well. You know, everybody on the team is an alpha in our situation, so it don't matter who got the ball, you know, we all going to be confident in that person in them last moments or in them big games because we know that everybody can make them big plays, and they've been showing throughout the whole season. So, in a way, but, like, not really. You know, I'm just here to win, you know, have fun with my teammates, and, but most importantly, win. Cal talked about that, that you guys, when you guys went around the room, why you guys could make a run. You know, we have Antonio Reeves, nobody else does. We have DJ Wagner, we have Rob Dillingham. Like, what does it mean to you knowing that you have so many dudes on this squad that could, you know, will you guys to, to Phoenix, to the, to the Final Four? Uh, it just make the game a lot easier for us, and it just give us confidence all in each other, but at the same time, it make us lock in even more, just knowing how good of a team we got and how many great players we got on the team and how much of a chance we got to make a run. So just knowing that we got to lock in and just we got to go out there and play every game like it's our last. Appreciate it, Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the guy that gets, gets up more shots than you, is that weird, like going into, you know, knowing that you're the three-point sniper? Yeah. Going up against somebody who does it, you know, even more so? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, just <laughs> somebody out there that can shoot more than me is, you know, that he shoots the ball. You know, so, you know, you just definitely got to figure out where he's at on the floor and try to stop him and try to, you know, tame him at all costs. What's the excitement level going in, you know, when you can run it back, kind of pick up where you left off last year, the good, the bad, the ugly? How, you know, is it, is it an excitement level for you, knowing that you can kind of, you know, rewrite the script from last year, kind of make a chapter two instead of just a, that yeah. last year was the whole story? For sure, you know, I feel like definitely just picking back it off for last year, we could definitely make it up. I feel like our team, has a lot of weapons that, you know, can do it, a lot of things out there. So I feel like, you know, just having another chance, having another try for the last year is definitely, you know, beneficial and I feel confident about it. Cal talked about you guys going around the room saying, you know, why do you guys have confidence that you can make a run, you guys can make it in the final four? Mm -hmm. And it was, we have Antonio Reyes and nobody else does. We have Rob Dillingham. We have, you know, what does it mean to you knowing that, hey, you're one of those dudes, but you have so many of those dudes that could, Pick up where one guy leaves off if one guy's struggling or whatever. Man, that's the key of a team. If somebody don't have it going, you know, have the other guy, you know, make plays for one another. So that's that's definitely one thing that is really important about this team. Is we have multiple weapons and we have multiple people that can create shots, get shots off, you know, and defend. So we definitely have a full package.
uh, Oakland's coach said that this was a matchup that he wanted to see, that when the name came up on the bracket that he was excited for it. Is that something you guys take personally, knowing that he wanted this matchup specifically, so that you know you guys didn't have a low post presence and some of those things? Is that something you take personally or not even notice it? Not even notice it. Just focus on what we need to do out there, focus on it. You know, playing our game, try to figure out what we need to do on the floor to win the game. And that's really all it's come down to. So, what will it take to survive and advance to, to you know keep keep on extending the season? Locking in, <laughs> really just locking in with what we need to do out there, play our game, and don't let you know the other team don't don't basically take the other team lightly. So don't think that. You know, they're from a different conference, mid-major, low-major, or high-major. Don't take them lightly. So I feel like that's one key thing that we need to uh, you know, focus on. What have you learned about yourself day one from when you arrived at Kentucky versus now going into you know, the biggest moment of your college basketball career? So what I learned about myself? Yeah. Um, just you know, stay confident, relax, you know, focus on what you need to focus on, and try to be a pro. You know, I learned how to be a pro these uh, last two years and just, you know, stand in the gym, you know, the coach talk to me what I need to work on, work, work on a defense and, you know, these guys uh, help me improve as well. So that's definitely some things that I learned from myself. What it take was working on what I need to work on, the NBA telling me things that I need to work on and, you know, staying in the gym, you know, getting those shots up, you know, from day in, day out and figuring out you know, how to be a better defender, how to be more physical down low. You know, all those things matter. So I feel like I took that into accountability going into um, this last year of my life. What has been your message to your teammates that have not experienced this, have not experienced the heartbreak that you guys felt from you know, leaving KC last year, and, you know, what you learned from and what you hope that they learn from you from that experience? That, you know, it's when to go home. You know, you definitely just got to go out there and play your heart out because any team could beat you. You know, it don't matter if it's a 16 C or, you know, it doesn't matter. And team, if you're in this tournament, you're a good team, regardless of what it is. So I feel like I told I tell these guys that all the time that they don't take nobody lightly. Prison one, learning, going through the adjustments, the growing pains. Obviously, that was a big storyline of last year to getting to this point now, where now you are a key piece of what you know could be a national championship run. Um, you know, our team last year, a lot of experience. You know, they were good the year before, so they all already knew some things. So I would just talk to some guys, pick up whatever I, whatever they knew, just try and soak everything in and. It's helped this year, and you know, I haven't really been nervous stepping into big games. You know, the bright lights don't really do much. It's, it's still another game, so I'm just trying to go out there and play hard as I can. I know you said it a hundred times now, but being back home, what's it like to you know have friends and family coming in from every corner of the world saying we need tickets? Just what what has this all-in experience been like? You know, it was tough telling people like like I don't got no more tickets left, but. <laughs> Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy to be back home, happy to play in front of the, my people, you know, people I love. It's a great feeling. How many do you think are going to be here from your family, friends, to support you? I couldn't even give you an exact number because I know I got people coming from my school to the people who already graduated high school to uh, teammates I played with in AAU or to people who just watched me in AAU. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. Does playing here put a new chip on your shoulder, an edge? What, what, is it, what does it mean for you personally to, to be playing here? Uh, just got to go out and perform. Can't go out and lay a uh, lay an egg. You know, can't do that one. But that's not really what's on my mind. Just trying to trying to follow everything we're doing here with everything, and just go out and do whatever I got to do to help my team win the game.